Hey gang, it's Scott. Welcome back to OG DIY. Today I've got a Yakima roof rack install and it's the sightline towers for uh, roof towers for uh, vehicles that, that have flush roof rails, which is what I've got on uh, the Lexus LX. And uh, I'm going to put on heavy duty bars because I got a basket uh, skinny warrior, which is Yakima's brand that will go up on top as well as perhaps uh, one day one of those um, traveling pods, right, where you, you can put even more stuff on top of your vehicle. So let's get right into it. As I said, this is unique to the vehicle that I have. So these um, sight clips that go with the sightline towers, and this is uh, particular to the uh, HD bars. This is the adapter kit that goes on top of these um, towers. So nice job by Yakima with uh, providing the tools necessary to get this done. They give you a little Allen wrench. Uh, and I got to tell you, there's good videos up on the internet um, to uh, check with installation. They're not all specific to LX, but you know, good, good videos. To get started with, right at the very top, it says go to yakimatech.com, put in your year, make and model, or if you've already done that on the ordering system online, you can go right to the site clips box. And in here, there's a QR code right there, that uh, site clip 27. But if you've purchased the right site clips, um, as I said off the internet, then, or off Yakima, then you've already got right here all the information you need that goes on this first page. And I'll tell you why in a minute why it's important. So for example, um, I find my model, it's an LX um, 2016 to 2021. Sight line is the uh, towers that I used. And then here's all the measurements across that top line. And those measurements go in here just for reference along the uh, directions as you're going through the directions to do things. So for example, the M1 measurement is 41 and 3 8 That's for the front tower. And then the rear tower has got a measurement as well of 31 inches, right? So, um, and the appropriate clips that go on each of the towers. So it looks like a pretty daunting installation. Uh, but I don't think it is as long as you start correctly, either you've ordered uh, the parts, as I said, through Yakima correctly for your make and model of vehicle um, and just plug everything in and get started. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with uh, removing these outer covers and following the directions here so I can put these uh, HD adapters on top of the towers. So that's going to be next step. So I'm going to need this and packaging, um, I got to tell you, was quite good. For example, these are all packaged nicely in here. And um, so I left one in here just to show you. So they, they do a nice job with that. And it says to just pull this straight out, which there you go comes straight out and then um, next thing it says to do is to remove the locking cover and I don't have my flathead screwdriver which I need hold one all right back to it we got this so that we can unhook this and that pulls that out and reveals screws here and a screw here that you have to back off okay so we're going to take the yakima supplied tool and we're going to loosen it says completely loosen the clamp tensioning bolt all right we're going to completely loosen that clamp tensioning bolt. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, it does fall out. 
completely loosen it. Now I see over here on this side, if you flip it over, it goes in right there. Squeeze the two together and it'll come back together in the threads. Right? If you take it all the way out, you gotta push it back together for the threads to uh, line up. So there's that. Remove the locking cover and it also says release or re loosen the security screw, which is this one. It just says loosen. Seems like it's loosened. Okay. And now we're going to take one of these, which is the HD adapter. include all the other adapter kinds but not the HD adapter so there's an extra set of directions for the HD adapter telling you to take the ends off and that's about all it tells you right there so we're going to put this back where it was and we're going to put this right in here All right, so they're calling this bolt right back here, the pinch bolt, and you need to get it sort of just so in order for it to show up. See right there, now it's starting to show up as you move, move it around, right? Which means this is gonna go in there like that, okay? That's your pinch bolt. Now inside there's like teeth right here, so you know when you sit this down in there, there's ridges. Those ridges are gonna go right on top of there when that goes down in there. So that's seated, but then you need to give this a six to seven turns, it says. And that's about it. Because I think what's gonna happen is this is gonna slide on this channel. And that's going to be your, uh, the way in which you're going to tighten that whole mechanism onto the bar. So I'm going to get another one ready uh, so I can do the same thing and, uh, and be prepared to slide it onto one of the bars. These are all universal, so it's not going to be a problem to get them a bit mixed up. Not concerned about that. So there's another one. Okay, first thing we gotta do is take this off. Gotta remember the sequence. Take that off. And then unloosen the pinch bolt. I'm going to loosen it quite a bit, probably about right there, and loosen what they're calling the security screw, which is this one. And the security screw must be what gives you access to the, yeah, that security screw gives you access to the top of this bolt. Because before, until you do that, you can't see that, that bolt, the head of that bolt. All right, so we're gonna put another one of these in here. Okay, kind of balancing act, turn it around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that one's on there. There's another one. Might as well do them all. So yeah, you can't see that head bolt. You can't get to it 
without removing or unloosening that security screw, which is interesting. It's a nice little protective feature, I guess, limiting access. So let's see. Yeah, same. You can see now you got access to that head bolt. And you can put the Allen key in there. Okay, so let's get this one in here. Once you get it, you can see it. There we go. There's another one. And that one's in there too. Okay, so all four of them, except they got one Aaron piece of hardware that just flew off. Not sure where that goes. Looks like a pinch washer of some sort. So, uh, looks like it might be right there. There's one anyway. Let's see if that's missing from this one. And in fact, it is. So, Push that back on. Okay. That's back on. All right. Next step. Next step, it says we're going to remove the rubber infill from the concave side. So that, here's the rubber infill. There isn't one on this side. So they've already removed it on the uh, HD bars. And so just as the HD bar setup says, which we looked at earlier, it says you gotta remove the end caps. So we've got the tool for that. is right here and we are going to remove the end caps also take note of this arrow right here this arrow on the bar same here that's pointing towards the front nose of the car as my as the way i'm going to orient it which i think is intuitive okay and on these it's just a screw right here Take that screw out, it's loose. Put that over here for now. And this cap is supposedly coming off. But it doesn't want to. Hmm. Okay. See if this other side comes off a little easier. Okay, that bolts off right here. And that one doesn't want to come off easier and easier. So I got a couple of things. I got some silicone spray if needed. Also a screwdriver and I thought I'd just slide this back fast and see if I can get it to come off. There we go. That did it. The plastic that's in there kind of was binding it up just a tad. All right, so that's off and I'm keeping everything kind of in their boxes. Let me just take this one off real quick. Use that same method. Here's a screwdriver. And I just come back and hit it on that flat surface. Not too violent. Okay, flip this one around again. Keep my arrow oriented 
the right direction, which is that way, I believe. This is just gonna slide on here. Yeah. And then we're gonna get the right measurement as appropriately for your vehicle. Um, and we can tighten this down a little bit just to sort of still can be moved around, but a little tighter. So it's just not flopping around in the, in the wind as you're trying to get your appropriate measurements. That's a little too tight. Okay. Let's put this other one on the other side. And make sure you put the side on, right? This side is covered. So you don't want to put that side on where the screw is. See, there's a screw hole right here. So you're going to put the screw hole side up. Make sure that's in. Then put your screw in. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to flip this back around the way I had it before, which is the arrows pointing forward. All right, so this is kind of cool. See where that says 41? The exact same thing is over here, 41. So you can get things centered appropriately, right, before you send it or put it on the vehicle. My vehicle shows 41 and 3 8. So I gave it one more tick on that side and one more tick on that side. So 41 and one tick. And then I measured it measuring tape and came up with exactly that 41 and 3 8 so i'm going to tighten these two towers down both sides and move on to the next step it was actually pretty slick so 41 and one tick right there tighten this down Tighten this one down. I'm not going to tighten it all the way because next thing is pitch A, pitch B, or pitch C. And really what that is, it's this key in here, this... Um, What do we call that bolt? So they're calling this a pitch screw, right? If it's dead in the center, that's position A, right? Dead in the center, position A, or B. Let me start over. That pitch screw, if it's dead in the center, is position B. If it's oriented down, it's position C. And when it's oriented up, it's position A. My vehicle because of all the detail I was asked to do, it says pitch on the front and the rear rack is both pitch B. So that means this will be dead in the center on its orientation before I tighten it down. Okay, so I'm going to tighten that one all the way down. The next step here, it's interesting, it shows reinstall the trim. Well, on the HD bars, there's no trim on the center, on the interior side of these bars. And I've heard that they make noise. Now you can order uh, from e-trailer some um, fill that goes in there, some plastic fill that's exactly that same size. And it happens to be made by Thule. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, I'll take a look, but Yakima doesn't, uh, apparently doesn't make it even though it's on this side of the bar. This is that fill piece, right? That's kind of a rubbery plastic. In this case, it's kind of a plasticky piece. 
Um, and there's another fellow did a, a YouTube video where he got this uh, piece from e-trailer that's made by Thule and it's a little higher up and it's a more rubbery and he happens to be a boater and it grabs hold of your boat better um, on the upward side. This is on the downward side and all I'm worried about is the noise it makes. So I'm probably going to order that same Thule uh, channel fill so that uh, it doesn't make noise. But I'm going to test drive it first and then I can cut it to fit and pop it in there and, and see if it causes a problem. So for me, trim and install the infill is not needed. We put on the ends and then we're going to get to um, putting the feet on here shortly. Okay, so all I'm going to do is tighten this up a bit. I'm on pitch B, which is dead center, which is good. And that looks fully dead center. Okay. Okay, next on the directions. It says to take one of these foots, rubber foots, and there's an R1 that points that way. And you're going to pop that right there. Okay? And then we're going to put the clips on either side here. There's an R28 and an R23 for each tower. So there it's, it's even stamped right there, R23, R28 for this vehicle. Uh, your specific vehicle will have different numbers mounted here or uh, stamped in here. So just be wary of that, uh, be mindful of it. Okay, and this is essentially, it's gonna grab the rail, right? So that, that's gonna grab the rail right there. That looks like the outer one. And this looks to me like the inner one right here. Uh, not sure, but looks like it. All right, so this is a pinch clip. You pinch it and it goes in these two holes just by pinching it. So you loosen that up. Then you take your outer clamp, which in my case is R23, put that in there, push it that way, like that, and then you're going to pinch these, and that's your outer clamp, it's in there. Okay? Once you tighten this down, this will this will solidify and be a much uh, stronger connection. So to give you a sense for what it feels like, it's these clips down here are holding this in. If those clips aren't seated all the way, this will come out. And they're loose. Keep in mind, everything's loose right now because we haven't tightened it down. But this also is in right there. See how that clip has seats back in that little lip? When you tighten it down, those will all torque against one another. So I got both of them in that configuration, right? with uh, the rubber foot pointing out. And those are gonna go on the roof. And if you see right over there, see that hole? So there's a dimple on uh, the inside clamp. And I'm gonna endeavor to put that dimple in that hole. All right, let's see if we've done the right thing here. Um, keeping the arrow pointed to the nose of the vehicle. You might want to use a ladder. In my case, I'm, I got the running boards of this vehicle, so it's no problem. Okay. So that one feels like it's in that hole that we were hoping it would be in. 
popped right down, no problem. Nope, I can see it's torqued out of that hole, so it's not in that hole. And this one, so the feet are landing, which is good, but I can see I'm a little too tight on the clamp screw to allow it to open up all the way. So I'm gonna unloosen that. And it's coming loose, that's good. Yeah, that one's in. You can see the nipple on that clamp is not hitting the hole of the flush mounted. Um, there, see that's in now? So we need to tighten up this clamp screw. Let's see. But in my case, I got it so tight, I didn't get it over the important. There, got to get over that important metal little hook. Now, well, I'm impressed by how dialed in the stinking um, measurements are by car, because that is just nailing it on both sides. That's terrific. Congratulations, Yakima. So let me point out a couple of things. Number one, it was on that other side, I had this uh, metal bracket on the outside of this. It was jammed up against that. So I had to loosen it up, flip it back up again, and put it down in here because there's a hole in that bracket. So you want to make sure you do that and then tighten it down. All right, that seems plenty tight to me. It's tight up on top, it's tight here. Shaking the whole car and not moving. So that's good. Uh, so I'm gonna put back everything that I took apart. Let me just grab that real quick. There is a piece right there. So let's start on this side and we'll bring it in and then Turn it that way so that's now on there and you can buy from Yakima which I'm going to do a lock kit right that has a keyed lock right there um, this is going to be pretty difficult for a criminal to pull off quickly but I feel like if that's locked uh, it'll make it that much harder for them to figure out so and then this as we remember, just goes straight on like that. That's nice. Okay, got the next one done much quicker. This goes much quicker when you understand the clips inside, outside, these measurements. And don't forget, you know, your measurements are going to change very, for example, this is the front for the LX, this is the back. It varies by an inch. So the back is, the feet are an inch shorter. Keep that in mind. Okay, there they are. Those are the medium HD bars and you can see sort of the width. They hang off the edges a little bit, but not much. Uh, I could see for a real robust setup, you might wanna go with the large longer bars. One thing I noticed is these channels up under here, I think these are making a humming noise as you drive. This one here as well. So I think at the, at the beginning of the video I said uh, e-trailer, you can go get that channel uh, rubber that goes right down the C-channel there. Actually it comes from Thule. Um, I don't, don't know that Yakima has it uh, to purchase. But I'm gonna uh, definitely buy that because that thing is making some noise as you drive. It could be just noise you're gonna live with, but all right, so up and done. Instructions were pretty easy, although you really gotta follow them for sure. All right, gang, thanks for joining me. That is the uh, Yakima Sightline.
and uh, HD bar assembly and uh, installation. Good product. Thanks for joining me. Hit that like button, please subscribe, and we'll have more videos to come on OGDIY. Be good. Bye-bye.